which is members' debate on motion 9362 in the name of Kate Forbes on bank branch closures in Scotland. And the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Now, can I say right at the start that this is probably the most subscribed members' debate we've had? And uh, we're really pushed for time because um, we have statements this afternoon starting from two o'clock. So I can't extend the debate. Therefore, timing is crucial. I'll try and get through everyone. And um, one and a half minutes for contributions in the open debate, please. And I call one and a half minutes in the open debate. I call Kate Forbes to open the debate for us. Five minutes, please, Ms. Forbes. Thank you, President. Point of order, Neil Finlay. Sorry, just, just for my information, um, are you saying it's a half hour debate and no further? That will be at my discretion, but we do need time um, to let people understand we need time to fix the chamber for the formal business this afternoon. I don't have time to extend as I would normally uh, for the amount of speakers that we have here. Ms Forbes, five minutes please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We are having this debate because so many people right across Scotland feel powerless. Powerless as national banks close branches at a faster rate than ever before, withdrawing from communities and leaving many customers behind. And there are so many speakers in today's debate because we have a responsibility to highlight our constituents' concerns, despite banking being a reserved matter and despite the Scottish Government having no formal power to intervene. My colleague Ian Blackford MP raised this at Prime Minister's questions yesterday and I am pleased to do so today. Because the recent announcement by RBS to close 62 branches in Scotland is just the latest, but certainly the most ruthless meaning that there will be only 89 RBS branches open in Scotland, compared to around 300 in April, April 2013. I believe they should reverse that decision, not least because in 2008, we collectively bailed out the Royal Bank of Scotland, and we, the taxpayers, are still the majority shareholder. The very customers who feel powerless and the very customers who will be most disadvantaged are the very customers whose taxes funded that bailout. But RBS are not the only ones, and no doubt other speakers today will talk about closures by Bank of Scotland and Clydesdale and others. It is the most fragile and vulnerable customers who will suffer most. Because whilst, yes, many people are choosing to bank online or to bank on their phone app, not everybody is, not everybody can, and not everybody will. It is the older and vulnerable customers who do not have access to the internet and still visit the local branch on a weekly basis because they trust the staff and they struggle to access services in other ways. Yes. Alistair Allen. On that very point, does the member agree that uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland's initial announcement uh, reassuring people on the island of Barra that they could still use bank and ATM facilities in Loch Boysdale, some 27 miles away by sea, shows that RBS has a complete indifference to the needs of island customers in particular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with the member that it is the communities of remote and rural Scotland badly hit by closures already with unreliable ATMs and patchy broadband that will suffer the most. Take Kyle of Luchalsh, for example, where RBS will close the branch. Kyle attracts hundreds of visitors during the summer. It has a lot of small businesses and residents and almost three quarters of the population cannot access speeds of up to 10 megabits per second of broadband. Across the Highlands, if RBS closures go ahead in six months time, 26, 26 Highland Bank's branches will have closed in the last two and a half years. That's 14 RBS branches, 10 Bank of Scotland branches and two Clydesdale branches. And it's also the cash-based businesses operating in a largely cash-based economy like tourism, which is a big growth sector in the Highlands, that will also struggle. And when RBS closes, branches in places like Bewley in six months time, they will be closing the last branch in town. There are 13 towns in Scotland where the last bank branch will be going, will be leaving, despite RBS's commitment not to close the last bank in town. 
So what does that mean? Well, Alistair Allen has already highlighted what it means for his island community. And for my communities, it could mean up to an hour and over of travel to a branch. For older people, for businesses that have tight time scales, and for customers who cannot rely on public transport, for a whole host of reasons. Now, last week, I visited three of the four RBS branches facing closure in my constituency, Bewley, Kyle of Lachalsh and Aviemore, and I intend to visit Malig soon. These closures come swiftly after Bank of Scotland branch closures in Fertrose, Broadford, Canusi and Bewley. Now, I have to finish with this, that there is no doubt that branch staff are doing everything they can to advise and support customers about alternatives, depositing and withdrawing cash at the post office, visiting the mobile branch or accessing the nearest ATM. I was absolutely amazed by the dedication and care of RBS staff in Kyle, Bewley and Aviemore and their managers whose sole focus at the moment are the customers they have known for years. They didn't make these decisions, but they're the ones who take the flack and see the customers who are anxious and worried. And for those customers who are concerned, and I close on this, I recommend that you pop into your branch as soon as possible to speak to a member of staff. Presiding officer, I call on RBS to reconsider their decision to close these branches for the sake of the people of Kyle, Malig, Bewley, Aviemore, and across communities in Scotland. Can I remind all of those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons and we move to the open debate. Speeches of absolutely no more than one and a half minutes and I call Edward Mountain to be followed by Richard Lyle. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you, Kate Fors, for bringing this debate. The Royal Bank of Scotland decision to close 62 branches in Scotland has been met with justified anger, and frankly, it's no wonder. Back in 2009, the RBS boasted that it was here for you wherever you may live, but it appears that is not now the case. When the going got tough for the RBS, it, the taxpayer didn't desert the bank. They rescued it. And in return, the RBS has been promising to maintain branches across the country. Now RBS is deserting rural Scotland. And the Highlands, as Kate Forbes has eloquently put, will be one of the hardest areas hit. If the RBS don't back down from these closures, there will be a real threat to the high streets in the Highlands and rural businesses such as tourism. And let's not pretend it will be anything else but that. Branches with their ATMs are closing, as, as Kate has said, in Kyle, Malig, Nairn, Aviemore, Bewley, Granton, Inverness, Tain, Tongue and Wick. Customers and businesses need the reassurance of a local branch alongside the first-class digital service they get, if they can get it. But in areas across the Highlands, the broadband is so poor that digital banking is just a dream. Presiding officer, it is clear that not enough thought has been put into this decision to close local branches, and I urge RBS to reconsider. And I call upon RBS to stand by their customers, the very customers that stood by them in the hard times that they faced. Thank you, presiding officer. Richard Lyle, followed by Richard Leonard. Thank you, President Officer. First of all, can I refer members to my register of interests? I'm an ex-employee of the Royal Bank, receive a monthly pension from the bank, and can I thank Kate Forbes for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. I joined Roy Scott Financial Services in 1990. This company dealt with financial services and part of the Royal Bank of Companies. When I joined the Royal Bank, the share price was a pound. Steadily over the years, the share price of RBS climbed and climbed and climbed, and they made what some would say extortionate profits. The bank wanted to make a £2 billion profit to fit in with the year 2000. They did. They made the profit and, in fact, went on to make between £6 and £12 billion profits in the early part of this century. It was heady days and the share price finally reached £20 per share. Buying other banks was a downfall of the Royal Bank. Share price fell like a stone and reached, I believe, 10 pence per share at its lowest. I blame the stock market and certain people who should have known better for the bank's downfall. But customers should not pay for their mistakes. RBS promised there will always be a local branch in the high street. RBS are making many of their loyal staff redundant. In my constituency, they're closing two branches. RBS say because it's falling footfall. Well, sorry, I dispute your figures. Most people do, do want to get into their bank, local branch. Most people can't deal with apps or new technology. Some people are dinosaurs. It should be a bank that cares. Look out, RBS. 
you went a step too far. Belsall previously had four banks in its main street. This proposed closure will leave us with one. I thank Kate Vaught for from bringing this matter to the Chamber today. Richard Leonard, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Uh, presiding officer, the people own a controlling majority stake in RBS. And if RBS bosses won't listen to reason and pull back from these closures, and if the Tory Chancellor Philip Hammond won't intervene to stop them, we must mobilise the people. On the 8th of December, I wrote to the Chancellor requesting that he steps in and calls a halt to this social and economic vandalism. And earlier this week, I held discussions with the Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell. We discussed the Red Book from last month's autumn budget statement. It makes grim reading. Growth figures were significantly revised down. But worse, I can reveal today that hidden away in the public finance section of that Red Book, the Tory Chancellor now has his sights on the Royal Bank of Scotland being sold off. Because of the downgrading of the economic growth forecast, Philip Hammond is proposing to fix public sector net borrowing by selling off RBS at a bargain basement price. So this afternoon, from this Parliament, I call on the Scottish Government and the Scottish Conservatives to stand up for Scotland. Call on the Chancellor Philip Hammond not to sell off the RBS. Call on Philip Hammond to veto the closure of these bank branches across Scotland and let's step up the campaign because in the end, if we own RBS, we the people ought to control RBS. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Mike Ruskell. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I congratulate Kate Forbes on securing this debate. This latest round of RBS closures is not just a blow to North Ayrshire's people, businesses and communities, but rather the latest insult demonstrating the sheer contempt RBS has, has for its customers and branch staff. Coburn and Sawcoats will join already closed Orion West Cobride, leaving only Brodick and Largs RBS branches in my constituency. It seems the RBS had no intention of fulfilling their much trumpeted promise not to close the last remaining bank in the community, and I'm annoyed that loyal customers were used as a prop in what appears to be an elaborate PR stunt. Closure of the 62 Scottish branch buildings will raise just 8.7 million, according to the Sunday Mail, if sold at all. As we know, empty bank buildings litter many of our high streets. And even if realised, this is still much less than the eye-watering £16 million bonuses paid to RBS executives this year or the £11 million sponsorship of Scottish rugby by RBS. This would be shocking enough for many high street bank, but even more galling from RBS, 72.9% owned by the UK taxpayer. Understandably, people are looking for answers and recognition of their investment. Of course, this decision was pro provoked by uh, mobile and online banking being promoted, but it's incredibly short-sighted to assume this meets the needs of customers. When challenged, RBS point to the mobile branch as a final word in rural and semi-rural banking. Yet across Ayrshire, many complain about the inaccessibility of mobile banks, which require, require customers to climb four high steps. It's appalling that wheelchair users are expected to conduct their business outside the van in all weathers, and RBS refusal to change uh, uh, to even meet and engage with campaigners. Presiding officer, this decision um, uh, is final RBS say, and more job closures and job cuts could be on the way. That is totally unacceptable. On behalf of constituents, I urge the Westminster government to exercise its majority shareholding and force RBS to engage with staff and local communities, um, and no one should be left behind uh, because of RBS's um, appalling actions. Can I just say, if people go over time, it may disadvantage other people. Uh, can we please have Mark Ruskell followed by Mary Gugion? Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank Kate Forbes for galvanising Parliament today. Nine of these bank closures will take place in my region. Branches in Aberfeldy, Alloa, Bannockburn, Bridge of Allen, Comrie, Dunblane, Kinross, Perth and Pitt Lockery are all scheduled to shut. The Korean newspaper has highlight, highlighted that this is the latest in a long line of closures to hit communities, with RBS branches in Loch Gelly and Dalgetty Bay, of course, shutting earlier this year. In Dunblane Bridge of Allen, my Green colleague, Councillor Tolmash, has been working with both community councils, and public meetings have been arranged for the new year in the hope of retaining at least some services. The RBS stated that they would never close the last bank in town, but it's clear that that's exactly what they're doing. And no amount of couthy marketing campaigns proclaiming we are with you every day will change the fact that they're abandoning communities to a computer server in Gogoburn. RBS say services can be accessed at post offices, but these are becoming scarce too, with over a quarter closing since 2002. And a weekly mobile banking service doesn't offer security for cash-based businesses who require to make daily deposits. 
there could be serious insurance implications for these businesses too, a point which I'd quite like the Minister uh, to, uh, to reflect on in closing. So it's time, Presiding Officer, for the UK Government to use its decisive share in RBS to deliver a network that's fit for Scotland's communities, fit for Scotland's people in the 21st century. Uh, Mary Goujon, followed by Mike Trumbles. Thank you, and my sincere thanks to Kate Forbes for bringing forward this debate today and allowing all members here to vent their frustrations at what is yet another disgraceful set of closures by a bank that will hit all of our constituencies and the communities within them hard. I, like many others here, was angry and appalled to hear the news two weeks ago that RBS was set to close a branch in my constituency, this time in Montrose. One closure, but one closure that comes straight on the back of three RBS closures over the past two years across Brechin, Stonehaven and Lawrence Kirk. And fresh on the back of Clydesdale Bank closures, which saw three out of the four in my constituency close. Again, affecting Brechin, Stonehaven and Forfar. I've been inundated by angry and seriously concerned constituents, those who work with people with learning disabilities, those who work with the elderly, the elderly themselves, people who are dependent on public transport, those affected by the last round of closures and have been redirected from all parts of the northeast of Scotland to the Montrose branch, which is now set to close. RBS expect people to use the, the post office or their mobile bank, putting more pressure on the post office who had expected to pick up their slack as well as the slack of the other banks who have abandoned their communities, and mobile banks, where there's a severe lack of accessibility for those with mobility problems, where you can't access the full range of services and where there's only a, a limited time in each of the locations they serve. All of this at a time when RBS are expected to shell out millions upon millions in bonuses. Well, enough is enough. We, the people in here and out there, own over 70% of this bank. RBS, therefore, have a duty to work in the public interest, and we demand that they do that by reversing this decision and keeping the branches open. Mike Rumbles, followed by Jenny Gilruth. Um, I live seven miles north of the village of Afford in rural Aberdeenshire and use the RBS branch there. When the bank announced the closure of the branch in September 2015, they recommended that I move my business to their branch in West Hill, some 19 miles away. It was in actual fact 26 miles from my home. I declined to do that, but I know many of the Afford RBS customers did, and the nearest other RBS branch was in Huntley, some 21 miles north of Afford. Then last October, RBS announced it was closing its West Hill branch, yes, the one customers had just been advised to move all their accounts to. Never mind, we did have the Huntley branch staying open, just as I say, some 21 miles north of Afford. Well, would you believe it again, presiding officer, RBS have in their latest round of branch closures decided in their wisdom to close the Huntley branch too. RBS has taken the decision on branch closures in isolation. They are a business after all, and they're in the business of making a profit. However, I would simply ask RBS and indeed the other banks to think outside the box. Solutions, that's what we need. They could still make a profit and provide a service to our rural communities by working together. Now, isn't that novel? Even with their competitors in a community hub with facilities local people could access with greater ease. If the banks continue to work in silos, we could see them all withdraw their services from our towns and villages, and that way lies disaster. Minister, I would say to the Minister, could we get the banks to, could you knock their heads together so that they could actually cooperate together to save the services and keep a profit for themselves? It's a win-win situation. Uh, Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I begin by congratulating my friend and colleague Kate Forbes on securing today's debate. Uh, time is limited today, therefore I will focus my time on the closure of RBS, uh, the RBS branch in Leaven. Uh, I could talk about 2014, and no, I don't mean that. I mean Mark Inch, I mean London Lynx, and I mean Thornton, each with populations of roughly 2,000 people each who RBS left behind. Let's not kid ourselves here. RBS have been closing branches in swathes for years, but it sticks in the cross somewhat in 2017, the same year the bank recorded an £871 million profit in the third quarter of this year. Merry Christmas to the shareholders. In my constituency, the Leaving branch shut its doors on the 3rd of October. There was no consultation. I found out about it and about the replacement mobile banking service via email. The bank now visits Leaving three times a week, but the sum total of opening hours is just a shocking four and a half hours. All time slots fall within the hours of a normal working day. Two fall across the morning period and one is over lunch. Additionally, as has previously been said by my friend Mary Goujon, uh, these mobile banks are not accessible. 
I don't think it coincidental that within weeks of RBS announcing it was shutting shop and the Clydesdale Bank doing likewise, uh, WH Smith shut up too. But leaving High Street is just a mirror image of every other town across Scotland, as we've heard today. Once the banks go, the shops close, and then what? RBS claimed that they had to shut the leaving branch because of footfall, but they couldn't give my office their figures for the months before it closed. Presiding officer, my constituents are being let down by a bank that they own and that the UK government has watched its hand off. It's not good enough. I stand with colleagues today across the chamber in demanding a royal bank for Scotland, not its shareholders. Thank you. Rachel Hamilton, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I thank Kate Forbes for bringing this motion to Parliament. The news that RBS has decided to shut 62 branches is devastating. And as Kate Forbes highlights, rural areas will be hit the hardest. The Scottish borders will see significant detrimental impact. It is disappointing that those in rural areas have seemingly been forgotten in this decision. Banks have a moral obligation to ensure continued access to service, especially for older or vulnerable residents. Clearly, RBS are not living up to this obligation. The borders is up in arms. Only three years ago, the bank shut its branches in Chernside, Greenlaw and Newtown St Boswells. Closures forecast for Selkirk, Duns, Eyemouth, Hoyk, Jebra and Melrose will cause further disruption and woe. Those who cannot or would prefer not to digitally bank now have to find another way to get to the bank, once on their doorstep, now miles away. In the borders where broadband is slow, digital banking isn't as easy as some would suggest. And of course, not everyone can drive. And that's why many retire to towns in order to access services easily. Previous closures in the borders have already impacted on, footfall high, on the high streets. Constituents in Hoyt now face a 40-mile round trip to their nearest bank. Furthermore, the post office or mobile bank is no substitute for a bank teller. Traders are now expected to shut shop to get their banking, damaging their business productivity and lessening opening hours. On Small Business Saturday, I spoke with traders and shoppers on the High Street and Jed who told me how shocked they were that the news of the RBS is shutting. And a constituent in Coldstream last week pleaded with me to contact their ATM provider as one was out of order and the other hadn't been topped up with cash. And this is what we are now facing. I really hope RBS reconsider their closures. Colin Smith, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Kate Forbes for her motion. Nearly a quarter of the latest RBS closures come in the south of Scotland. Communities in Annan, Gretna, Langham and Lockerbie in Dumfries and Galloway, Bigger, Canwith and Douglas in South Lanarkshire, Dunbar and North Berwick in East Lothian, Duns, Eyemouth, Hoyt, Jedburgh, Melrose and Selkirk in the Scottish borders and Pennycook and Midlothian will all see their branches axed by RBS. That's less than a year since the closure of branches in Newton Stewart and Dumfries and Galloway, as well as Cumnock, Mockland, Presswick, Troon and Girvan in Ayrshire. Presiding officer, across South Scotland, our towns and villages are being left without a single bank branch, despite a previous commitment by RBS not to close a branch if it's the last bank in town. Of course, misleading public, the public is what RBS do. Recently, RBS business customers in Langham received a letter from their bank which appeared to hint at the closure of the local branch. When challenged on this issue, they denied it would happen, yet weeks later, closure is exactly what they've announced. RBS say they'll try to avoid compulsory redundancies during the latest closures, but the reality is the scale of these closures is such that loyal, hard-working staff are being left with no reasonable relocation options. Yet, with 165 jobs on the line in the UK government-owned RBS, how did the Secretary of State for Scotland, David Mundell, initially respond to the news? He got his photo taken outside RBS and bigger. Staffing customers don't need sympathetic words and photo calls. They need direct intervention by the UK government to stop these closures now. And we need legislation from the UK government to ensure where a branch is the last in town, there can be no closure without full consultation with customers and the final decision being made not by the bank itself, but by the Financial Conduct Authority. Thank you. Stuart Stevenson, followed by Brian Whittle. Uh, I draw members' attention to my register of interest. I start by reminding banks that they do not stand apart from wider society. They exist to serve it and depend on its support for their continued existence and for their special privileges. Bank of Scotland opened its doors in 1695 and drew opprobrium in 1715 when its board backed to Jacobite rebellion, leading to the foundation of the Hanoverian Royal Bank. That nearly closed the Bank of Scotland. Today, the Royal Bank and others removing branch-based services from communities across Scotland, in particular in Banff, in my constituency, there is a significant risk to some banks' future success. Banks should set aside short-term financial targets to ensure their long-term survival. 
They can do so by re-earning the trust and support of local people, by being part of communities through a meaningful physical presence in communities. In 1826, the Bank of Scotland manager in Kirkcaldy angered customer David Landell, uh, was challenged to a duel, accepted the challenge, and lost. The bank lost a manager and could not even take possession of the gun that killed him. Fall out with your customers at your peril. Today's gun levelled at the banks merely is metaphorical, but could be just as deadly. Uh, I call on Brian Whittle to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can also thank Kate Forbes for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And it's been highlighted already in the Chamber today, those bank closures have a hugely detrimental effect on communities across the country, especially in the more rural towns in my area, like Cumnock, Mauchlin and Govan. Moreover, it will disproportionately affect those who are most vulnerable, like the elderly, and in Govan, for instance, I heard from Age Concern, who will have to travel often by uh, public transport to either Air or Stranraer, which takes hours. Now, while we rightly call out these banks and lobby against these bank closures, can I suggest uh, it's also important that we engage with the banks to try and develop solutions on the ground in the communities that, we are, that are affected. For example, in Govan, uh, when Age Concern uh, uh, highlighted their concern around the use of technology, uh, I did contact uh, RBS, who uh, sent somebody along to a workshop and continue to do so uh, with the age concern to try and address these concerns. Also, the, the route that the mobile banks are currently taking and their accessibility are under review in, in my area following feedback from constituents, and this has been passed on to the bank. So while it is absolutely right that we put as much pressure on the banks against these closures, can I also encourage members to engage with the banks to look at practical solutions available to try and mitigate the worst of these cuts while we continue to put the utmost pressure to bear from this place? Thank you. My apologies, it's Claire Baker next to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you. Uh, the widespread bank closures are today facing a lot of criticism. Within my own region, the recent announcement of further RBS closures will rip local banking out of the heart of these communities. Villages and towns like Comrake and Ross Alawa will now join Cowdenbeath, Burnt Island and Leaven in having their branches closed and access to banking services restricted. 26 branches across all banks have closed already this year alone across my region. The banks argue that as more people use online banking services, the branches are no longer viable. But many people rely on these banks, the elderly and the technology poor. Even if you are online, there are significant digital access challenges with broadband connection speeds in Aberfeldy, Comrie, and Ross and Pitlochry in the bottom 20% in the UK for download speed. There's also an assumption that people who use online banking no longer need a convenient branch, which is just not true. People still need to deposit cash, particularly those running small businesses. I spoke to a local solicitor this week who needs to deposit cheques, for example, within a time pressure. And this will be extremely difficult for him as there are only four branches of his bank are left in the whole of Fife. People want to discuss their financial arrangements, whether it is loans, mortgages, savings, and have decisions made locally. We need to find a solution which ensures access to essential banking services. We cannot allow banking to be decimated across the country and there must be alternatives to this direction. Widespread bank closures only risk customer dissatisfaction and put unreasonable strain on bank employees. RBS and other high street banks need to recognise the strength of public feeling and rethink these closures. Fulton McGregor followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to thank uh, Kate Forbes as others have done. I'd like to start by uh, echoing what others have said by stating how disappointed I am that RBS have taken this decision to close 62 branches across Scotland. I am, however, grateful that the Cope Bridge branch is not one of these, and I don't think that Cope Bridge High Street could take any more pain. Several High Street bank closures already, the DWP ruthlessly moving hundreds of staff out of the town centre operation, amongst other factors, has led to me pulling together a stakeholders group to work with the council and local business owners to try and desperately save our town centre. And I thank the minister for his answers yesterday. But in the time I've got today, I do want to talk about the branch in my constituency is closing, and that's in steps. That is literally the last bank in town, but not just the last bank for that one town. Residents who currently use the steps branch will need to travel over three miles to Kirk and Tillich for their closest uh, high street bank. Users will not just be from Steps, but the surrounding villages of Christon, 
Moody's Burn and Auckland Walk. For the elderly, disabled, those without their own transport and those in poverty, this is a real added challenge and I would urge RBS to consider all their customers' needs before taking this action. These very people are also the ones who are most unlikely to know that their branch is closing. And for example, on the day that the announcement was, ma was made, I went over to show my support to the staff. There was a, a queue of customers forming, eh, mainly elderly, and I actually overheard them say, oh, have you heard that the, the branch in Airdrie is closing, oblivious to their one closing? And I'm sure Alex Neil will pick that up in his speech. It's went under the radar and steps, and that's why I've taken every opportunity I can to raise it. Thank you. Gordon Lindhurst, followed by Rhoda Grant. Deputy Presiding Officer, it gives me no pleasure to speak in this very important debate, and what I have to say echoes much of what has been said by others across the Chamber. I have myself, of course, raised this issue in this Parliament a number of times. Bank closures in Juniper Green and Valerno in Lothian region. Yet again, it appears that elderly and disabled customers and others have been forgotten in the latest round of planned RBS closures. Banks appear to assume that their preferred option for banking, online platforms, will solve the problems of access to banking for everyone. They will not. And that includes the RBS in Linlithgow. An elderly resident of Linlithgow told me about her upset at the RBS closure this past week. But at least there's still the Bank of Scotland I can go to, she said in a resigned fashion. At least one bank left, for now, because within the week, Santander also announced closure of its Linlithgow branch, leaving both it and RBS with only two branches each in the whole of West Lothian. The Clydesdale Bank branch in Linlithgow that I used as a customer myself closed several years ago. And I have, of course, sat with bank representatives discussing spreadsheets on branch usage, reams of statistics showing how many or how few people use or don't use whichever particular branch is set for closure at that point in time. What they completely miss, in my view, is any attempt to provide an alternative plan for the way forward, whether on their own or in conjunction with other banks. So I close with this point, and many, many points could be made, and I echo what Mike Rumbles has said, which is this. Banks are not in the same position as ordinary private companies, least of all RBS. They are underwritten by the taxpayers who guarantee the deposits in their accounts. What is no, their plan for future I really provision have to stop of services there, Mr. to these people? Uh, Rhoda Grant to be followed by Gillian Martin. Um, can I also congratulate Kate Forbes for securing the debate? These closures will have a devastating impact on all of Scotland, but especially in the Highlands and Islands, where 13 of those branches will close. The justification for these closures is cynical. We have the worst broadband in Scotland and indeed the UK, and therefore the ability to bank online is a distant dream rather than a reality. Possibly the worst of these proposals is the closure of the branch in Castlebay. This means that people will have an over 20 mile drive and a ferry to catch to get to the bank and then they need to try and get back home again. It will probably mean that it will take the best part of a day for them to access the bank, not to, not to mention the added cost of that. Added to this, it's the place where my constituents have some of the worst problems accessing broadband. And what of the elderly people who can't make the ferry journey to get their pension? While we're rightly concentrating on service provision, we must not forget the staff who work at these branches. They're losing their jobs because the distance they would have to travel to an alternative branch would make relocation impossible. Neither do they have a hope of gaining a similar job because these are few and far between in rural communities. These closures are being directed by the banks that we bailed out. The people making these decisions own the, owe their own jobs to the communities they're now riding roughshod over it. It has to stop. The Westminster government must intervene on behalf of us, the shareholders. These be banks belong to the people. They must make the people their priority. Gillian Martin, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, President Officer. In my constituency, RBS has announced plans to close branches in the towns of Ellen and Turriff 
Incredibly disappointing for local residents and businesses will now have to travel further to do their banking. And of course, closures like this help the elderly the most. But this morning I was contacted by 20-year-old Hannah Mackey, who's a student nurse and Tariff Brownie leader, and she put the travel issue into context. She works 12-hour shifts and on her days off she does the banking for the Brownie pack, it involves mainly cheques and cash. And if RBS closes, she'll have to travel 16 miles to Maud, where the only bus would get her for 15 minutes before the branch closes, and there's not another bus for over three hours to get her back home. She is not hopeful that a visiting mobile van will ever be of any use to her given her shift pattern. And earlier this week, I met with the Tariff Business Association, 60 businesses from across all sectors, and they've started a petition calling for the decision for RBS to be reversed. I've signed their position and I fully support them and urge people in Tariff to, to give them their support as well. But I am very cynical about the effectiveness of this because I was there myself in Mint Law earlier this year with Councillor Jim Ingram trying to get uh, Clydesdale Bank to reverse their decision to close their branch there, the only bank in town. We were unsuccessful and we were only able to save an ATM. The public bailed out the RBS in the banking crisis and it's a duty to support residents who benefit from the local service. I'd urge the UK government not to turn a blind eye and dismiss this as a commercial decision and the, as the MP for Gordon, Colin Clark, has done when he replied to me about the Ellen RBS closure. It's always rural towns that suffer the most when decisions like this are made. Maurice Corey, followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you, Deputy Signing Officer. I, would, I thank Kate Falls for bringing this issue to the members' debate today and how very important it is too. Banks provide a vital important service within our communities and most notable within the smaller towns and villages. The demographic of an area has a large part to play in the importance of retaining local bank branches with more elderly people and small businesses needing access to the local bank branches within the more rural areas and towns. <coughs> To do, uh, those people who do visit branches do so regularly and need them for more specific requirements. Relatively recently, there have been a number of closures of various banks, and within my region, it's included the Clydesdale Bank in Bearsden and Helensborough, but Barclays have closed in Dumbarton, and the RBS have closed in Alexandria. Without the ability of residents to perform branch banking, branch banking uh, provides a notable and avoidable inconvenience and potentially dangerous or harmful situation for more elderly and vulnerable people within our society, endangering community safety. With, branch branch, with bank branches uh, continuing to close, it forces people to withdraw cash in a less secure environment. And in conclusion, Deputy Signing Officer, I realise that internet banking is becoming much more popular, but there are still leaves many not using it, and in fact as much as 50%. Branches form a very important part of our communities, and I implore the RBS directors to give this extremely serious consideration. Thank you. Tom Arthur, followed by Ian Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Let me begin by also thanking Kate Forbes for securing this uh, debate. Uh, we've heard much talk about the uh, last bank in town. In Renfrewshire South, we're down to the last bank in the constituency. We lost the RBS in Loch Winnock in 2014, and we lost the RBS in Barhead last year as well. That, um, and to add to that, we lost Clydesdale and Johnson. So we now have one um, RBS serving the whole of the Renfrewshire South constituency. And this is not the first time a member of uh, Scottish Parliament for Renfrewshire South has had to raise that. My predecessor, Hugh Henry, in the members' debate secured by Neil Finlay three years ago, raised the very same issue. And uh, I thought it was telling how Hugh opened his speech. He said, to quote Ross McEwing, we need the chief executive of RBS, we need to remember and then never forget that the customer is why we are in business. Well, I think, you know, certainly for Mr. McEwing, who the FT reports received a payment of $7 million last week, he's certainly in business. Now, there's been a great deal of um, talk about the uh, from the RBS about people moving on to alternative platforms for banking, mobile banking, digital, online. That's very well, and they will point to numbers of uh, decrease in footfall in the shops. But who are the people still going to use for local bank? And that is not captured because this is a policy that has been put together. It's a decision which seems to be predicated on the dead-eye dogma of bean counters with absolutely no, no cognizance whatsoever for the needs of society. This is the wrong move, as Stuart Stevenson very uh, eloquently highlighted. Banks have a social responsibility as well, and it's time RBS, taxpayer-owned RBS, remembered that. Ian Gray, followed by Bruce Crawford. Uh, thank you. My thanks, too, to <coughs> Kate Forbes for obtaining this debate, and I wish to use it to add on to the record the closure of RBS branches in Dunbar... And so on. Uh, to add the, or to the record, the closure of RBS branches in Dunbar and North Berwick in my constituency and to register the anger of my constituents in those towns 
uh, a, a, a bank to which many have shown loyalty over many years or even decades, treating them so shabbily. Uh, and it's not the first time. Uh, just over a year ago, RBS closed their branch in Preston Pans, leaving that town with no bank branch at all, while Bank of Scotland have done the same thing to Gullen. All of these branches are busy. Only a few days ago, I was told of queues out the door in North Berwick, and that was true of Preston Pans a year ago as well, but still it was closed. Indeed, my constituents' experience of these branches jars with the picture RBS paints of deserted facilities shunned by switched-on online customers. And what jars too is the bank's PR and advertising image of a bank which serves customers and communities, while actually it deserts so many of them and responds to their protests with contempt. But what jars most of all uh, is exactly how these banks look to the public to save them when their own greed almost consumed them, and now they treat us with contempt. These closures are not new, but they should be the straw which breaks the camel's back. This time, we must find a way to stop them. Bruce Crawford, followed by Neil Finlay. My thanks to Kate Forbes, uh, and well done for bringing this before us today. The closure of RBS Bannockburn will create real challenges for that community, particularly elderly. This branch covers Bannockburn, Hill Park, Plain, Cowie and Throsk, as well as Flynn. But, President Officer, it doesn't have to be this way. Yesterday, during First Prime Minister's question, Theresa May brushed off calls to intervene on RBS closures, citing them as commercial decisions. President Officer, the UK Government owns 73% of RBS. The Treasury has over 70% voting rights. The influence is there, and our communities need the UK Government to use it. These same RBS customers are the same taxpayers who bailed out the banks by billions of pounds. They help save it. Is this how they're to be treated? I say to the Tory government that it's simply not just a commercial decision. It is a social travesty. You have the power. This bank was saved by taking money from the pockets of ordinary people. The UK government owe these people a debt. It's time to start paying it back and stop them now. Yeah, yeah. Neil Finlay, followed by Alec Neil. Uh, President officer, I've been on RBS's case for a long time. We've now just got two branches left in West Lothian, one in Mid Lothian, and several in Edinburgh have closed, leaving vacant uh, buildings on the high street. I've asked for meetings with uh, the very well remunerated Ross McEwen. He has refused. I've asked them to stop closures, refused. I asked them to hand over uh, the buildings to the community and set up a legacy fund. They refused. And let me tell you why they refused those last two points. They said, and listen to this, we have to secure the best return for shareholders. This is the bank that has fined 3.1 billion for mortgage mis-selling, 14.5 million for having poor mortgage records, 5.6 million for, re fail failure to re uh, for reporting failures, 56 million for computer failures, 5.6 million for failure to screen customers, 2.8 million for failing to handle complaints. Uh, it, it, um, had to put aside 391 million for LIBOR rate rigging. 1.3 billion to deal with the payments for businesses missold products and 3.25 billion for PPI missed selling. How is that value for shareholders, Mr McEwen? I have to ask you today. So let's not take any of their garbage about value for money for shareholders. They could hand every single building over to the community and give them 100,000, 200,000 or a million with every building and still it wouldn't reach the value of the fines that they have had to pay out on our behalf as the shareholders. It's a disgrace, that's what they are. Every one of us should ask Mr McEwen for a meeting. He doesn't want to get out of his bunker. The last of the open debate speakers is Alex Neil. Thank you very much indeed, Deputy Presiding Officer. And again, can I congratulate uh, Kate Forbes on getting the debate and in an excellent introductory speech. Can I say one of the things that's very obvious already, Presiding Officer, is that despite all our protestations, the Royal Bank has no intention at the moment of changing its mind on any of these proposed closures. Now, that's a totally outrageous situation. And we've all sought meetings with Ross McEwen and other senior people in the bank. I have a suggestion to make, presiding officer. I think all the people who have taken part in this debate should seek a joint meeting with Ross McEwen 
and get colleagues who want to join us and let them say no to the Scottish Parliament as a corporate body, not pick us off as individuals. It's high time these banks and these big corporations accepted that they have a social responsibility as corporations and particularly corporations that are in the public sector have a special responsibility to the communities and their shareholders. Now, in my constituency, the RBS shut their shots branch last year. The building is still sitting empty. They've refused to hand it over to the community. Uh, and now they're going to close the ERG branch. They don't care about these communities. Despite all the adverts and the propaganda, they're doing nothing for us. So I say, presiding officer, let us get together, cross party, cross parliament, as one delegation and demand a meeting with McEwen. Okay, in order to uh, allow the minister to respond to this debate, uh, I'm minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by a short time. Um, may I ask Kate Forbes to move a motion without notice? I move. Um, the question is that the debate be extended. Uh, are we all agreed? Agreed. Um, I'm sure the Minister's quite relieved at that. <laughs> Minister, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and can I at the outset uh, declare an interest as a customer of the Royal Bank and a user of one of the branches which is being closed. I thank Kate Forbes for raising today's motion. I appreciate greatly that Ms Forbes and many other members have uh, sincerely felt genuine concerns uh, as have been demonstrated today over the Royal Bank of Scotland's announcement that 62 branches are to close, not only of course in Ms Forbes' constituency but as we've been hearing across the whole of Scotland. Indeed, in my own patch, as uh, Rachel Hamilton has, uh, has said, six of the eight branches in the Scottish borders are to close. Kate Forbes in, uh, is correct to identify the UK government retains legislative and regulatory responsibility for banking and financial services, and as a number of members have said, is the majority shareholder in RBS. Uh, and indeed, Ke uh, uh, Kenny Gibson and Kate Forbes have made that point strongly, as has Alec Neil in his uh, very powerful speech there. However, the Scottish government stands ready to work with UK ministers with the bank and with other stakeholders to support and reassure customers in light of these planned closures. That's not to say we are happy with the closures and my first preference clearly, the government's first preference for those branches to stay open and I, I very much hear the comments that we made today. Uh, concerns have been raised uh, indeed about the impact of branch closures on our local communities. These closures will be a body blow to many communities across Scotland, leaving many areas with significantly reduced branch coverage and indeed um, the availability of banking services. Presiding officer, if I may give an intervention. Mike Rumbles. A genuine question I raise on that point. Would, would, could you, as Minister, not get together with all the banks that service in Scotland and get them to the heads together? Because these decisions are make, being taken by each bank in isolation to each other. They need to work together. Paul Wheelhouse. I, I was planning to address that, but I'll, I'll, I'll take that point head on now, since Mr. Mr. Rumbles has fairly raised it. Um, I would want to reassure Mr. Rumbles and all members in the chamber, indeed, Mr. Whittle made similar part, uh, points here about trying to find practical solutions. Uh, I just want to assure Mr. Rumbles and others that we are engaging with RBS on, uh, we're not just accepting that the bank is going to pull out and leave nothing behind. And we are trying to liaise with the bank about what they can do as a legacy if branches are to close. And I, I repeat the point, I'd rather they didn't. Uh, but if they are to close, to find a practical solution. And the point that Mr. Rumbles raised about thinking about a community hub is something we have already raised with RBS about how to use the states. I was aware of Mr. Finlay's previous, previous point, uh, if I may. Neil Finlay. I wonder if the Minister would help members by agreeing that no Minister will um, facilitate, or any member will facilitate, any corporate functions in this building for RBS until they come to the table and have discussions with members about what they're up to. Paul Wheelhouse. Um, as, as the member knows, I mean, I, I hear the point Mr Finlay raises and I'm very much aware of his long-standing interest in this issue. Um, I don't govern what happens in the Scottish Parliament. I'm sure the presiding officer would be the first to say that. Um, but I, I take the point entirely. We are trying to make uh, the point to RBS that there is a the reputational issue here that they clearly are, are suffering in the court of public opinion. They're suffering in the court of this chamber's opinion as well. And I'm sure it's not lost on them the strength of feeling that we've heard today. In our view, the government, UK government uh, should not be a passive bystander as we've made this point. Uh, we do believe it should take immediate action to defend customers and ensure that communities, in particular the most vulnerable members of the communities, have a point very powerfully made by Marie Goujon, who 
made the point uh, around uh, those with learning disabilities in particular, uh, that those communities need to be protected and to have access to day-to-day -day banking services. We, of course, understand that many customers are now choosing to access banking, banking services in different ways, but as many members here have said today, that is not true for all customers. There are many customers for whom it is quite uh, frightening uh, to go online because they hear stories of online fraud and other issues and they need reassurance. Uh, we know services do not yet meet the needs of all customers and for some time uh, to come banks must continue to offer services to all customers in a way that suits those needs and there are often of course very sensitive issues that need to be discussed in the context of bank about uh, bereavement about uh, redundancy about uh, other matters which uh, you wouldn't want to be standing in a queue at a post office waiting for someone behind you to get stamps while talking to someone over the counter about something that's very sensitive so clearly face-to-face -face contact in a private space is still a core part of what banking services need to provide Last week, I spoke with Stephen Barclay, the Economy Secretary to the Treasury, to press the case for a guaranteed level of access to essential banking services. We do recognise commercial de decisions are taken, but where regulation is in place, that creates a level playing field, and it also uh, provides the context in which those commercial decisions are made. And we do believe there's a role for regulating to ensure there's a minimum standard of banking services left uh, when banks do close branches. And the UK government has made clear Unfortunately, it will not, despite having a majority stake in the Royal Bank, uh, exercise its influence at this, at this time. And it may, uh, I think, um, need to be pressured to, to do more on that front. But I recognise the support of the Conservative members of the Chamber for uh, taking action on this. I appreciate RBS does not and, and must, uh, must does and must operate on a commercial basis, but as we say, we believe there is a role for regulation here. We believe also the UK government should work to ensure robust alternative options are in place before it allows those closures to take place. And we are prepared to play our part in that. Uh, we're not expecting uh, entirely to fall uh, to others. But I acknowledge the work the banks are doing with post office to expand services available to their customers through the network. However, as a number of members have said, while post office is able to offer a basic banking service, businesses in particular have concerns over cash deposits with uh, presently a, a barrier that most post offices are only able to offer up to £2,000 worth of cash being deposited at any one time, which is a real barrier for those businesses in tourism uh, located uh, uh, businesses uh, which are in rural areas such as Cape Forbes own constituency uh, will face real challenges if the majority of their trade is conducted in cash. Uh, I spoke with senior RBS staff on Friday, uh, the 1st of December, immediately following the bank's announcement. I spoke again uh, to the bank uh, yesterday, Simon Watson, who's the head of retail banking, and asked the bank to give further consideration to the support they'll provide to customers affected by these closures. I do welcome uh, the commitment to provide training and support to customers in setting up and using digital services, but there, and there is more I can say on that, but not yet liberty to do so. But however, in some areas, there will continue to be challenges in terms of digital access. A number of members have raised this, and I've urged Royal Bank to take this into account because I don't believe that has been sufficiently taken into account to date. Uh, not least the difficulties in, ex uh, in accessing a reliable Wi-Fi or 4G service in, in large parts of rural Scotland and indeed urban Scotland. RBS maintains it's made changes to its mobile banking fleet to allow it to serve a greater range of locations. Uh, Jenny, Go, Ruth and others have raised, uh, I think, legitimate concerns about the availability of those mobile banking units at convenient times for customers. And I think that's, again, something that we'd urge the Royal Bank to take on board. Uh, I agree very much with the remarks that have been said today. I also have asked the bank to give further thought to the future, as I said to Mike Rumbles, of the branches that are to close. And we believe there is room for collaboration between not just RBS but other banks. Uh, IFAs, tax advisors and others potentially to provide a hub which will provide a, a step change in maybe the abil availability of financial advice to members of the community. So there could be a good opportunity to come out of that. But I want, if I per permission, rising officer, just to say something about staff because I think uh, I don't want to leave the debate without saying something of that. The plan closures, of course, as a number have said, affect the bank's customers but also their staff. I had a very constructive meeting this week with representatives of Unite to discuss the impact of these closures on their members and I agree wholeheartedly with Kate Forbes' praise of the staff and how they are handling this and supporting customers at a difficult time. The bank has indicated up to 160 jobs are at risk as a result of these announcements, but that's in full-time equivalent terms. Because of the nature of the part-time employment in the banks, there's potentially a Unite estimate up to 350 people will be affected by the redundancy programme uh, and uh, the potential for voluntary redundancy options. And as Rhoda Grant has said, a real practical difficulty for those in remote rural locations, they will have no alternative RBS site perhaps that's practical for them with caring responsibilities or other geographic barriers to, to, to reach them. Uh, Unite have made clear that they are con also concerned the impact these closures on communities and we will work closely with the unions. And in conclusion, uh, uh, presiding officer, I just want to urge, as members have done today, RBS to listen to what's been said today, reflect on the remarks. 
work with us where they can do so to try and provide a long-term solution to those communities affected by the closure of the last branch in town. And we, we are uh, certainly state on record today our appetite to do that and to help uh, those communities, the staff affected, and indeed RBS itself to come out of this with a better reputation and I, I think they risk at this moment in time. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate. Can I ask members to clear the chamber quickly, please, to allow it to be prepared for this afternoon. And this meeting is suspended until 2 o'clock. Thank <laughs> you.